Hello humans, hello humans. Just about noon, heading back out to the coast, outward bound. Got all my chores done. And I can get ready for the tree removals tomorrow. Well, they're just dropping the trees tomorrow and chopping them up and then we'll get the um, uh, <coughs> removal next week. So things are, are moving right along for the extension on the house. Anyway, I um, wanted to talk about uh, specie, right? Money, cryptos, all of that, gold and stuff. So I had a, you know, I got a real issue with Joe. He's a nice guy. This is a JSNP4. Um, but he had this dream and he thinks it's prophetic. And so he sold all of his cryptos at 38, when Bitcoin hit 38,000. And um, just, just like recently, th this is a while back, like a couple of weeks ago that Joe sold. <clears throat> anyway, uh, just recently, we've had uh, indicators out of the officialdom that we're about to get into one of those um, big pumps, okay, uh, for for the cryptos. So, in my opinion, uh, Jay Snip is going to miss out on all of this, right? Uh, let me see if I can... Okay, so there are these people that do this uh, kind of charting when they try and predict uh, where uh, uh, coins are going to go and they use these candles and reference marks and all of that. And within that group of the chartists, there's these people that are uh, a subset of that that are wavers, okay? And they think that there's a particular wave formation that goes through currency and stuff. And you can see these waves uh, in hindsight, right? It's a, it's kind of an issue to pick them out ahead of time, but if you're pretty good, you probably can. Anyway, one of these groups had contacted me. I've been talking to them. And just the other day, I got an email, and they'd sent me this uh, chart thing that they had, which showed that if Bitcoin held, it would that it would it was going to bounce along. In their opinion, it was going to bounce along in the in the 41 to 43,000 for a couple of days, maybe a week or so, and then it was going to go. Um, way up and it was the next time it would have any kind of a a pullback was when it was about um when it was over eighty seven thousand and they had this number it's like eighty seven thousand i want to say eight hundred and nineteen or something right and it's just the this number that shows up in their chart when you run the chart out and 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 look it's like oh okay that's what it should be when it reaches this particular point so 87,000, and then it'll have a pullback. They're expecting that pullback might uh, go down to uh, as low as um, the upper 50s. So from 87,000, they think it might go down, uh, you know, might lose down to 57,000. So a big correction at that point. Then they think there's going to be this next big leg up that will take a Bitcoin over 100,000. So that's how these these uh, chartists see the progression of it. And, uh, you know, it's like, wow, you know, Joe sold at the wrong fucking time if these guys are correct, right? He's relying on his dream and that's fine, um, you know, but, uh, you know, his dream guy should have been a little bit more accurate relative to numbers and convinced him don't sell until Bitcoin is at 88,000, right? Something like that. Anyway, um, Coincidentally, with the chartists, so like two days after the chartist guy sent me the email, uh, we start getting into the indicators that the um, uh, the Fed is going to, you know, the Fed does their little meeting, the Federal Reserve Bank, which is not part of the federal government, has no reserves and is not a bank, uh, comes on out and, um, and uh, says, well, we're going to, you know, uh, reduce our we're going to have three uh, reductions next year. So they're giving guidance for next year. Well, all right, so this is part of what we were expecting, the people that follow the Fed and all of that. We expected them to do this, and I expected at some point they would have to, as a result of the inflation that they are creating, they would have to do some form of a um, flood the system. Uh, anyway, so... When they do this, uh, it's not going to be sufficient for them to simply lower rates. That'll provide a big pop. There's no question about that. But they are going to have to do something uh, to uh, provide uh, 
more flow, more volume, and more speed of the of the Federal Reserve note, aka the dollar, the petrodollar, through the system. Because we're just not using it as much, people aren't buying as much, you know, it's not a big boom time, everybody knows we're in a recession, and all these other reasons, they're going to have to do this. And so now we're seeing some of the indications of how they intend to do it. Uh, it's going to be a combination of the uh, lowering of the rates uh, and even more than that, setting the expectation for the lowering of the rates, okay? So they're telling you basically right now, we know that the system is fucked, we know that it's coming apart at the seams, and we're going to try and save it, uh, and that starting next year, we'll try and save it by these mechanisms. And then at this point, they're also doing the uh, raising of the federal minimum wage. Now, they're not raising the federal minimum wage to give everybody a raise, Okay, they're raising it because they've diluted the money that much that in order to keep the system afloat, to keep all these people at the lower end of the um, uh, economic strata afloat, they must raise the rates or raise the, um, the minimum wage just to accommodate this. Now, of course, that has a ripple on effect, right? It causes big problems for the, um, uh, all the businesses who have to now raise all of their prices in order to be able to pay for these new minimum wages. And so that's going to force the inflation into particular um, like avenues, right? So they're forcing inflation into the price of goods uh, by uh, causing an inflationary pressure within uh, the cost of labor. And so our the result of this, though, all right, so there's one more factor to this. Not only are they going to um, uh, reduce the rates at the Fed level, not only are they going to uh, forgive student loans and forgive as much fucking debt as they can, I will not be surprised to see them start forgiving mortgages, okay? I'm not shitting you guys. They're going to forgive mortgages. Now, the reason they're going to do that is because in the process of forgiving that mortgage, they seize the property. You just don't recognize that, okay? Anyway, it's not like you're not going to make house payments, but they're going to forgive some aspect of the debt. They're going to lower the interest rate on it, something to get you that, that what you think of as a pop, a, a, you know, more, more specie flowing through your hands. They're desperate to raise the uh, speed of transactions within the United States because they've slowed down to the critical point where if they slow just a little tiny bit more, uh, we're into a major reset or a major depression. And we're going to have that depression no matter what. They can't help it. It's the end of the system. They're just doing everything they can to prolong it a few more days, you know, to give them a few more days of grace, uh, blah, blah, blah. So um, one of the things they will do is a they're going to attempt to flood the system. Probably they'll do something weird. Okay, maybe they'll say, okay, uh, you know, I, I don't know how they're going to do it, but they'll try and get cash in the hands of the people that are in the lower third of the strata uh, of the economy. Um, and it'll be more than simply uh, raising the minimum wage. There'll be some kind of a handout from the federal government. This will likely come in... Um, uh, probably February or March. Uh, it's going to be that that dire for them that they'll have to do something at that at that time. And, uh, and anyway, though, so the impact of all of this, all of this stuff that's happening right now, is supportive of these these uh, wave guys, the chartists that use the waves, because we're seeing that the federal government is going to shove the Fed and the federal government, the Biden regime, is going to shove vast quantities of um, Federal Reserve notes into the hands of everybody they possibly can here in the United States. Uh, in so doing, uh, they are going to push cryptos through the fucking roof because a lot of people will see the panic in these moves. Even if they really don't understand economic stuff and so on, they will start becoming really antsy, really anxious about uh, what's going on, and uh, they will start converting a lot of these uh, newly um, pimped out dollars, uh, newly created dollars, are going to go into cryptos and gold and silver as well. Um, so we're going to see a, a big uh, support for rising crypto prices uh, within the actions of the federal government. And I suspect that that support 
is starting already with this pre-announcement, right? Because they're managing the expectation. They've caused uh, certain things to already occur in the stock markets uh, because of these expectations that they're managing them in the way they're doing it. And so um, they will have um, this impact. Uh, it's already activated. They'll have to shovel in little bits of, of stuff uh, as we go along. Uh, but they're going to have to try, their goal is to try and create a raging fire in the economy. Um, whether we have it or not is immaterial. They, they, they are going to act as though we're going to have it, and they're, they're, the regime is going to take the, this approach basically to forestall revolution. Every time you get into one of these major uh, depressions, we have revolution. So in the um, uh, early 1900s, right after they'd started the Federal Reserve, we almost had a revolution, right, in the, in the, um, uh, the depression of 1914. And they actually had uh, hundreds of thousands of, of uh, people that had been in the military at that stage preparing to march on Washington, D.C. That was in 1914. And we go and we do this again in 1917, um, 18, where we've got uh, difficult economic conditions. Then we get the, uh, the roaring 20s here because the, the Federal Reserve was trying to compensate for what was going on globally uh, with the uh, uh, failure of the Reichsmark, which at that point was one of the primary reserve currencies. Anyway, though, so here we are. Uh, we're right on the cusp of a major run-up. Uh, over the course of this next year due to these circumstances, right? Due to the fact that they're um, pumping the uh, fiat money, creating more fiat uh, as fast as they fucking can, and then also doing everything they can to get it into circulation so it will be spent. And um, a lot of people are wising up and they're going to put it into cryptos as soon as they get it. Uh, so we're getting this pump-up effect that's going to, in my opinion, the, the government's going to have to drive that all through next year and keep it going as long as they possibly can to get anything um, like the, any kind of traction that they, that they may uh, with the Communist Party um, candidate, whoever the fuck that is. And they'll probably, you know, blame it on one side or the other. It doesn't matter. This is like a third force that's going to go on out and do their own house cleaning. And... Um, so I can't, you know, I think that the power elite are really worried about that. And, um, they're, you know, this is the whole uh, Zunker Bunker thing, uh, Zucker Bunker in Hawaii, right? These fuckers are worried about the population not liking them and acting on that. So um, we're seeing it all to hell and gone uh, on the elitists. And then there's a lot that are really stupid. The elitist and the second tier, they're the ones that are just being used, that they, you really don't know what's going on. They're sort of the normie Satanists, you know. Anyway, uh, those people are going to just be slaughtered. They have no fucking clue. Um, so it's going to be kind of interesting. Uh, as much as uh, Obama and these people want to push it, uh, I just don't think it's going to happen because they don't really grasp where we're at um, in terms of the the emotional tenor of the um, uh, population. Our tone is um, not as they perceive it. Anyway, um, so we'll get a big pop in the cryptos, uh, get a big pop in gold and silver uh, as we go forward here. Uh, we know that the... Um, Scenario that Joe thinks his uh, dreams came out with where we had six dollar silver and you know I don't know maybe it was twenty dollar gold or something uh, Whatever it was uh, we know that that's not going to happen uh, Because uh, Costco sold a hundred million dollars worth of gold Oh, they sell out within hours whenever they have gold available to be purchased and they have to limit the uh, sale of it to one per person there's that much demand um, so now the only way that we could get those kind of prices that, that Joe's talking about, uh, that his dream told him now, bear in mind, I don't think his dreams prophetic. I don't think his, his dream has, um, 
any merit to it whatsoever uh, relative to predicting the future. Because, you know, ultimately, yeah, we were going to get to 38,000 no matter what relative to Bitcoin. Uh, the fact that Joe sold, that's kind of weird. But anyway, uh, but we won't get to those dollars for gold and silver um, unless we go back to a constitutional money, uh, which would be a gold and silver money, in which case... Um, uh, Six dollars an ounce silver doesn't even make sense then under under those circumstances because there's 375 or 371 grains of uh, silver um, to a silver dollar and at a constitutional level uh, the support uh, it would maybe hold a, a six dollar value for silver um, and I, I think let me see that would be maybe we'd get down to uh, under constitutional money, uh, I, I don't know, I couldn't project what Bitcoin would be under a constitutional money that was convertible to gold and silver. But the only way that we could get that would be the collapse of the federal government and the reinstitution of a constitutional republic. Uh, in which case, all the bets are off. We wouldn't have a stock market as you know it now because all those stocks are bogus. They're rehypothecated, you know, a thousand times to one. Uh, nobody's ever getting the shares of the stock. They only get it uh, put into an account in their name. Um, and it's a giant Ponzi scheme. And so that, that's going to collapse under constitutional money. Uh, so much would collapse under constitutional money that Joe would never, ever, ever have the opportunity to purchase cryptos at, at those low prices where they would escalate to the prices that they're getting now. The only reason we have these prices on, on cryptocurrencies now is because the money is shit. The, the currency is not worth any fucking thing. Um, so, uh, just saw a mill I'm going to have to go and talk to. They've got some good prices on lumber. Anyway, um, so, so it's a juxtaposition. If you're going to have uh, very high dollar values for cryptos, you're going to have to have a very weak currency. If you have a very strong currency, you're never going to have high dollar values for cryptos. So you might buy, you know, um, XRP, I think is going to crap out. I think XRP is a bunch of shit. It only has uh, bankers as its customers. And as the banks crash, which they're doing now, more and more of those potential customers and active customers for XRP are dropping out. Two of the banks that were part of the uh, XRP Ripple Consortium uh, are folding, right? They're, they're being bought out and collapsing. So there's not a lot of strength in that. But let's just say that XRP continued. And at that point, I don't know what he's going to, was thinking of buying it at, you know, two cents or, or six cents or something. But say that you bought XRP after all this stuff and silver was six dollars uh, uh, an ounce and you bought your XRP at two cents. Well, you know, at that level, constitutional money, you don't have inflation, right? You don't have inflation coming in and um, pumping up things. You don't have the kind of markets we have now. So if XRP is purchased at two cents, it might well be 30 years before you've got XRP up to five cents absent inflation because it's a valuation thing, right? Unless XRP added value, causing people to want to buy it, there's no reason for it to rise in price when the money is stable and is backed by gold and silver. So you see, in my, my problem with all of Joe's dream stuff is that there's no um, rational scenario that would support these divergent aspects of what came in there. This is one of the reasons I don't, you know, I'd never trust my own dreams as is any form of prophecy. Also, there's this thing, okay? So, if you have a stake in the game, your dreams will delude you. If you have an emotional attachment to whatever is the outcome in there, your dreams are there to help you work out that emotional attachment. They're not there to, to tell you the future, right? And this idea of spirit coming down and telling you the future in your dreams, well, you know, that's kind of, in my opinion, that's the same level of shit as Bo Polney saying, oh, you know, it's the Daniel timeline, right? And he's working off all these, this weird math and all this uh, stuff from deliberately, uh, badly translated uh, material. 
So the people that translated and created the Bible that Bo is working off of wanted to deceive people when they did that. And Bo thinks this is the legit word of his God. That's very much akin to uh, Joe thinking that this dream uh, is valid uh, even though it has to be interpreted, okay? Even though he has to look at it and say, this means this and this means that and that means that. And your mind will always lie to you. This is like the, the thing that the RV guys understand. Your mind will supply to you what it, it thinks you want to hear. And so, so if you have an emotional attachment, so asking for a dream is preloading yourself by saying, in my opinion, it, it's preloading yourself to these emotional states that when you go to sleep will trick your mind or will have your mind trick your consciousness by coming up with this shit. Because in my opinion, Joe's dream is full of shit. Obviously, it is not the scenario. Obviously, so far, there is no crash. Yes, there probably will be a crash, but it's going to be a crack-up boom, which means that we're going to see the stock market go through the fucking roof. It'll be going through the fucking roof with digits, and, uh, and these digits are based 100% on deflating money. Um, and we're going to have inflation within the the. Uh, numbers and it's going to be meaningless relative to the stock market because it's a crack up boom. Um, in my opinion, this crack up boom will um, do a 1920s style uh, pump up of the stock market, but now we also have cryptocurrencies and gold and um, silver and, and the currency will flow there in increasing amounts to the point that that starts becoming an embarrassment uh, for the Federal Reserve and the powers that be, the establishment, and these guys are going to go really fucking crazy. They will probably come up with some form, it won't be a law because they won't be able to get it through the House, but some kind of regulations and stuff on censorship to where they will try and put you in jail for saying their money is worthless, for saying that, um, you know, the we're coming to this point where the communists around Biden are going to have to start really hardening up and showing themselves a little bit more fiercely uh, as we go forward. Now, it's all going to fail, uh, but it's going to be a really interesting year as this shit fails uh, around us, fails in front of our, our face, right? So the thing to do is to prep. You know, you gotta, you gotta get the stuff you need while you have currency that is still effective in purchasing. Even if it's shit for purchasing, you still have to do it. So now, because it's shit for purchasing, you've got to make uh, really hard decisions as to where to put this dying dollar um, in terms of your labor getting you money to buy stuff, right? Because now you're gonna understand that, oh look, the currency is deflating. That is to say, we have inflation in the numbers and deflation in the purchasing um, power of our currency. And it's doing it at such a rate, such a huge, fantastically fast rate, um, that I get my paycheck now. I'd better run out and buy the food now while I can buy those few more calories for those few more uh, dollars because 30 days from now, it would be less calories for the same amount of dollars. And that's meaningful because you need calories to keep your body alive. So, anyway, um, I I doubt we'll get, we're, well, we're not going to get $100,000 Bitcoin parties this year, but it really looks like it's on for next year. It also really looks like maybe at the, the time that we get into that crash, before we get to constitutional money, which we will head there, but before we do that, we'll hit that $600 per ounce on silver. And again, you won't want to live in that world. It's just going to be too chaotic and everything's going to be too expensive. Nothing's going to work. We're going to have hyper novelty in the sense that there's no authority anywhere. And so on and so on and so on, right? It's just going to really pile on and cause all kinds of problems. Um, in the world that creates the $600 silver. And that will exist briefly. Okay, so $600 silver is not going to be a in perpetuity. It's not going to be a multi-year thing, right? It might only be 
four or five months that it's at that level, and then we go back to a constitutional money. At the point that we go back to a constitutional money, I could see um, $6 per an ounce of silver, no problem. But it'll be that way for 20 or 30 years. Bear in mind, okay, so prior to, oh, all right, for those periods of time that the USA had uh, no central bank, so before the Fed, and after the second bank of the U.S., okay, so between the the Civil War and the um, existence of the Fed, uh, we had uh, no inflation. In fact, at one, well, no, that's not true. We actually had a little tiny bit of inflation when they found vast quantities of gold up in Alaska, okay. Uh, but uh, we actually had deflation um, with increasing productivity. So as Ford came out and started making uh, assembly line stuff, things started getting cheaper. You could get more value for your dollars. This did not sit well with the bankers. That's why they started coming up with the um, their scheme to put the Federal Reserve in place. They need that inflation in order to be able to print uh, the fake money and bribe people, uh, you know, so that they can steal babies and eat them, that kind of thing. Anyway. We're probably going to see um, Bitcoin crossing $100,000, uh, in my opinion, uh, before fall of next year. And uh, But again, that's not good. It's an indication of how bad the fucking money is. And I'm dealing with these issues now as I try and, uh, you know, deal with my housing problems here. And uh, running into the, uh, into the sporadic and erratic uh, inflationary rates and various different kinds of material. It's just really bizarre. Anyway, guys, I, I got to go and do some stuff. I've got another stop here. And uh, I'll make another one of these later. I don't know if we're going to be doing any next week. Uh, it's Christmas. I've got to do some stuff on Christmas Day and the following couple of days. And uh, maybe we'll get our stumps removed that Thursday or Friday of next week. I don't know uh, when we can get the equipment in here. Then we can actually get started building. Okay, anyway, take care, guys. Uh, have a happy no L, right? There's no fucking L, uh, at least not in my area. And uh, it's like, <coughs> you know, fuck the Elohim. Uh, you know, if I knew there was an Elohim around here and I had the opportunity, I'd put a bullet in its head. Uh, just saying, you know, and it's also like, no, I'm not going to be dealing with observant Jews anymore. If you're an Elohim worshiper, you know, you're not my buddy. In my opinion, you're my enemy. Talk to you guys later.